So in this video, we'll take a closer look at the Coral USB Accelerator, the Edge TPU co-processor, and I want to use these in my QNAP NAS servers. I have three QNAP NAS servers, and I also bought three of these Coral USB accelerators, and they have just been out of stock for so long now. So once they finally came in stock, I just pulled the trigger and bought three of them, even though I probably only really need one or two. I have four QNAP NAS servers, two, TS-464 and one TBS-464, so all of them four base servers. And these Corel USB accelerators can heavily improve the speed of all the AI. Inside that small NAS server it only has like a small Celeron CPU and using apps like QMAG or even PhotoStation in QNAP, where you can actually recognize objects and persons faces and so on, these small Coral USB accelerators, and you can also get these in M.2 form factor. And those are actually a little bit less expensive, but I have used all of the internal ports on my server, so USB is the way to go for me personally. But these ones here, they can just speed up that process so much and also take away some of the load of that CPU. Even though QNAP do have the Intel Open Vivo in the systems, it's just so slow at detecting objects and persons and so on from images and can also, like I said, bog down the CPU quite a bit and actually make the system pretty unusable for a period of time at least. So if you want to self-host your own image server, which is something I kind of want to do, or if you like me also have a lot of photos dating all the way back to like the year 2000 where I got my first digital camera and you want to go through all those and organize them at all according to like persons and objects and so on. These are also excellent for that. So this video will unbox, take a closer look, and we also try to set them up and run some testing inside of one of my QNAP NAS servers. So of course, all the content is the same. So let's just have a look at one of the box here. Have a little bit of branding all the way around the box. And you can of course use these with various different devices. A lot of people use them with Raspberry Pi to make your like surveillance cameras more intelligent. So again, they can detect objects and people like in the frame and follow them and so on. I'm not going to use them for my surveillance cameras. I really only need them to like go through all of my photo libraries and all the newer photos that, that, that I will upload to my server using QMAG. But anyways, just come in this little brown box here. Nothing really interesting. So let's just get straight into it. I've been waiting a long time to get my hands on these because they've been like out of stock forever. Finally able to get them in my hands. It's kind of surreal been following them for like a year or something, I believe now. They've been out of stock almost everywhere. And we have the little instructions here. USB accelerator, edge TPU coprocessor. Doesn't really state much here in the instructions. So <laughs> it's pretty much self-explanatory. You'll just plug it in. It's USB powered and I believe it uses less than one amp. I believe it's around 900 milliamps or something like that. So it's very power efficient. And man, this thing is just so tiny. It's hard to really judge on photos, but man, definitely very small. That's all we get in the box, so let's just get rid of that. And man, this is just a tiny little device. This is compared to like my Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. You can see there, it's almost as small as the camera modules on that phone. So very tiny little device. It does have aluminum on the top, I believe for cooling. And a little bit of coral branding. I don't know if you can actually see that on camera because of all the lighting here, almost makes it look a little bit re reflective, but it is a matte coating. We do have small holes in each corner, I guess, so you could tie it to something. Maybe you could use a zip tie, let's just try that and see if you a small zip tie will actually go through this hole, I believe it just about can. Yeah, it actually can. So you could potentially just zip tie it to a shelf or whatever you wanna mount this. And in the bottom here, we do have the USB Type-C plug where you both get data and power. And you do, of course, get a USB Type-C cable included. A very short USB Type-C cable. Actually, the photos I saw online had a wide cable. Not really a big deal at all, but yeah, a very long USB Type-C plug here in one end and a relatively long USB Type-A plug in the other end as well. But of course, it doesn't really need that much length. If you want to plug it into a NAS server like me, I'm just going to plug it in and leave it next to it. Or maybe zip tie to my shelf where I keep my NAS servers. On the back side, we do have the serial number that I've just covered there. And you can actually see into the PCB. So kind of nice. It's screwed in place to the little heat plate here on 
the front made by you with Google. Okay, because it's AI, I guess. Let's just throw it on the scale, see how much it actually weighs. So we're looking at close to 20 grams for the little device itself. And of course you have to throw in the USB Type-C cable as well. We're looking at 36.5 grams, so not a heavy device at all either. The next thing to do, of course, is just to plug it in and try it out. So we'll run some tests on my QNAP NAS server. First, we'll just run the AI without this little accelerator, and then we'll try to do the same thing. Plug in the accelerator, see if it will actually speed up the process and also maybe take some load away from the CPU inside that system there. So let's run some testing here inside of my QNAP TPS-464, which is a four bay NVMe server. And I have four two terabyte NVMe's in here, but yeah, it shouldn't really matter too much. You can see right now we have no devices connected. So the USB accelerator is not connected to the device as of yet. So let's just go in and add a folder. This is just a backup folder from my iPhone. I believe this is the iPhone 13 Pro Max. So 12 megapixel photos, they're around or above 1000 photos in this folder here from 2021. So let's just try and run it a little bit without the USB accelerator attached to the device. And you can kind of monitor like the CPU utilization down here. And I've kind of sorted by the uh, app that uses most uh, utilization in the system. So you can kind of see if the little AI core and so on will use a lot of CPU resources. And you can also like monitor the temperatures and so over here if you're interested in that. But yeah, let's just apply this folder here to the multimedia console. And it will just take a few seconds. We can go over here in overview. So right now we have 504 photos. That number should go up in a moment. You can see it's working right now. And yeah, it should be doing something. The CPU definitely did go up a little bit there. I have paused the thumbnail generator, or generator, so it will not generate any thumbnails as of now because that will also use a lot of CPU resources. And let's just go in here in the AI engine. You can see it's now working and it is at 27%. And let's just let it run a little bit because you can see it just takes forever. So it's uh, on picture 452 now out of 1640. Doesn't really use that much EPU, CPU utilization or CPU power right now, but it does spike off from time to time. Yeah, as you can see, it's pretty much just stalling. And that's the main issue I have. So it does search for facial recognition, ob object recognition, and also, also for similar photos. And you can also see now we have 1640 photo. So we've gone up with more than a thousand photos. Working, working, working. All of the AI stuff here but it just doesn't seem like it's doing anything really. If I kind of resume the thumbnail generator, you should see the CPU actually go up quite a bit in a moment. Yeah, you can see there does get up at least spikes up to the 30. Sometimes it's a go it can go up to like 90-ish percent of using there, but you can see the multimeter console is definitely the one that is sucking the most power right now. AI engine is still just at 27% at 452 images out of 1600 so it i'm not really sure why it's not really doing anything there's not really anything else running on the system that is sucking any of its resources really but you see multimedia console still using most cpu so it's just generating thumbnails so smaller images of the bigger images so it's easier to do, just like scroll through the list instead of having of course to pull in like all of the big images and you can see there it had a big spike and again, for the thumbnails, 97%. And that's very annoying when you actually are using the system because at times it can just become so unresponsive, almost to the point of crashing or feels like it's supposed to crash or something like that. But you see now we're up in like the 90-ish CPU utilization, but still, oh, actually we just moved up a little bit in the recognition there. And now you can see we're actually up at 29%. So maybe we have to have the thumbnail generation running to actually be able to use the AI engine. So it is definitely doing something in the background there, but man, this just will take forever. Not really all that usable in my opinion, at least. And again, you can see there are spikes of CPU performance there. Now we're up at to the like 93%, but I definitely am sure this is the thumbnail generator there because as soon as I pause this, you can see here, now it is paused takes a few seconds and the CPU utilization there just goes down again. Yeah, you can see that it just drops down again and 
32% now. It does something, definitely in the background, but let's just pause all of these here and let's then try and install the little TPU USB accelerator and see if it will actually speed up this workload so it will run much faster. And also maybe if we can limit those CPU spikes, I believe the TPU doesn't really do anything in terms of the thumbnail generation generator, but maybe we'll see here. But definitely all the stuff here is paused right now. Let's go into the overview. We can see everything is just paused right now. And let's just plug the little TPU accelerator in. And here we are at my little server rack or server shelf. I don't know if you can actually hear it, but the server is definitely getting very hot. Normally the little fan doesn't sound that loud. But anyways, we have one USB available here. Let's just plug the CPU accelerator in here with one hand, which is like a little bit hard to do. But yeah, plugged in now. So let's try and go back to the computer and actually run some tests and see how much improvement this little device actually does. So now it's plugged in. You can also see it here on the hardware resources. We have the Global Unichip Corp Coral Edge TPU. Right now it's idle. And you can also go in here and set what kind of priority you want this little device to have. And I believe you can actually plug in up to four of these to one device. Correct me if I'm wrong here, but let's just set it to medium. That is the default setting. Let's go back into the multimedia console and let's see if we could actually get it working. Uh, we can also see here under the hardware resources that is now idle. Maybe it will just spin up a little bit when we actually get going here. So let's go back to the AI engine, same folder and everything. So let's just try and hit resume on all three of them. And it should hopefully start within a short period of time. And now you can see multimedia console is in use here. Let's see if those percentages will just start going up. And definitely the CPU. Ah, okay, start to go up a little bit, but it did take a few seconds there. Something happening, I'm not really sure. Doesn't have any background task running here. 32%, so far I am not impressed. But of course I need to do some more testing here. The CPU does seem to be maybe using a little bit less. CPU temperature, 50 degrees, but you can see the fan definitely has spun up quite a bit, which you also probably heard in the video clip before. It's usually around the 2,500 to like 3,500 RPM. So it's like up into the 6,000 RPM right now. So yeah, not much is happening. So let's try and enable that thumbnail generation or generator. Maybe it needs to generate the thumbnails before it will actually go on and go through the AI recognition there. So let's see if that will still like spike, as you can see here before. It was spiking quite significantly and up to the like 90 plus percentage of utilization. Under the hardware setting here, we don't see other than it's just used by multimedia console, but it did just go up here by 1% under the object recognition and similar focus photo recognition. So maybe you need to have the thumbnail running in order to actually use the TPU and AI of this little system here. So far, we have not seen any of those extreme spikes. Hopefully we'll not see any of those again. If that's the case, then it's been all worth it in my opinion. But yeah, definitely it does go up in percentages. Now we're up to the 35%, maybe a little bit faster than before. So we probably need those thumbnail generation they're running to be able to also like go through the, all the AI processing and so on. It's definitely not as fast as I was hoping. But as you can see, the CPU graph down here in the right corner, we've been up to the like 34% CPU utilization, but not up to like the... 90 is that we were before and that's been my main issue because from time to time the server can just become so irresponsible or unresponsive excuse me so you cannot really use it at all all of the other services will just kind of crash and also one time i had it rebooting on its own whenever it was trying to like ai generate all of those images or find all ai stuff in images so hopefully this is the maximum cpu utilization we'll see with the tpu i would wish though that we could actually see what kind of tasks this little TPU accelerator actually does. You can only like monitor the CPU memory on network. Would have been nice if you could also monitor the TPU. And also the fan of the system is actually starting to ramp down just a little bit. Temperature of the CPU also like five degrees cooler. So it is definitely doing something, just not possible to kind of see what it is doing. It is doing it in the background. I would say it actually is faster than before. I've run other testing on my other servers as well on my uh, TS-464, which is like a 3.5 inch 
four bay NAS system, pretty much exactly the same hardware, but just in a 3.5 inch form factor. That one I have around, I believe, 100,000 photos or something like that. And that little system just became so unresponsive and the fan spun up to like the extreme. So it became very, very loud just running the AI on the, all of the photos there when I was importing them to the photo station and QMAG. Hopefully this will make it much better and make the system much more reliable. But as you can see, definitely we have not had those extreme spikes. And it seems like you need to have the thumbnail generation running. Maybe it will just create thumbnails first and then I will send it on to like the AI engine where it can like find objects and so on. And you can also see background task up here. We are, oh, we have 984 images remaining and we just had like a pretty big spike, but that was actually the container station. As you see down there, I do have some containers running in the background. Multimedia console, we have not seen those 100% spikes as of yet, or close to 100% spikes. Let's just let it run for a few minutes more and see if we'd actually get some of those extreme spikes into the 90-ish percent CPU utilization category. We have not had those as of yet. Container station, which I run some containers off, have definitely been the most power hungry as of yet and been like the cause of those spikes we have seen right here recently. But you can see actually multimedia console doesn't really use that much power or CPU power. And I will definitely say it is faster, not super fast. Would have been nice to see one photo a second or close to those timings there, but yeah, it's definitely faster than before. It uses less system resources than before. So it's been running now for several minutes and I think we can safely conclude that it actually is definitely not only faster, but also less taxing on the CPU running these tasks, AI and thumbnail generation as well. I haven't really seen it go above like the 26 is each uh, percentages, which is definitely good news. CPU is definitely getting hot, but uh, it's not really concerning at all. And the fan is definitely running faster than just idling, of course, because it is definitely using a little bit of CPU resources constantly. You can see the graph here. So of course the CPU will get a little bit hot, but definitely much, much better. So yeah, it's worth it. The system has been responsive throughout and hasn't like almost crashed or stalled or anything like that. And all of my other services still have been working just fine. Again, that was also one of the issues I had once I started like creating thumbnails and all this AI stuff. It would just bog down the system to a point where like all my other services wouldn't really be responsive. And that's definitely not usable at all. And it is, of course, not the most powerful CPU. So it does run out of breath pretty easily so a little bit extra help here will definitely be fine or nice and it doesn't really use any power that i have noticed at all i do have a smart power meter connected to my server rack there and i haven't really noticed any extra power draws so in my opinion this is definitely all worth it now i can consider actually using qmag to back up all my photos on my phone and maybe in the future completely move over to my own self-hosted system here right now i use onedrive as well not quite sure i'm gonna leave them just now, but this is definitely one step in the right direction. Now I can actually use it and at the same time also use the other services on my NAS system. So it just won't crash whenever I like upload new photos to the server. So yeah, this has just been a first look unboxing and test of this little TPU Coral engine from Google. I think it's worth it, especially if you can find a good deal. Right now it's in stock at Conrad. I can, of course, link to them down in the description below. If you subscribe to their newsletters as well, you'll also get 10% off. And I, I'm not affiliated with Conrad at all. This is just what I've done myself. So you can save a little bit extra. And this little device here, of course, works with multiple other devices, including Raspberry Pis and so on. So it's not just QNAP, but that's just what I have here in my local setup. But that's pretty much all I have for this video. I hope to see you again in a future one. Until then, take care.